Got please brief messages so don't go away. Hey, folks, welcome back to uh, Out in the Open. Of course, we're coming to you from Dunkelbergers on Main Street in Strasburg. And uh, we've got Will Daskal with us, who is a local artist <coughs> and an avid deer hunter and, uh, and turkey hunter. Uh, Will, um, you got a show coming up. Let's get that out of the way first before right. we talk well, about it. Well, I have a lot of shows. Actually, I actually have uh, six things going on. Right now, I have uh, an oil painting that's uh, going to be going into the Allentown Art Museum. I have yeah. uh, uh, an oil painting that is going into the uh, government offices in Bethlehem at the Rotunda Gallery. And I just had two watercolor paintings that were juried by the president of the American Watercolor Society and accepted for a show uh, in uh, Lehigh, Lehigh University in Bethlehem. And they're hanging right now in a show at the Siegel Gallery. And of course, I have uh, one watercolor painting that's hanging right now locally in the Snydersville Family Diner. And uh, two uh, paintings that are right here in the Art Space Gallery in, Snyder, in uh, uh, Strasbourg. How can people reach you? You have a website? I have a website, uh, willdaskell.com, and if okay. they want to take a class and learn how to do it, they can uh, contact me through the Pocono Arts Council, 570-476-4460. Deer are very social animals, aren't they? One of the things that I learned as a kid, being up close with deer, uh, was that they're constantly making sounds. Uh, there are approximately, if you listen to all the taxonomists and scientists, uh, 16 different subspecies of the North American whitetail. The ones that we hunt in this area are the middle-sized version of the northern woodlands whitetail. There are 14 to 17, depending on who you believe, different vocalizations that deer make. Now, I don't say that people should go out and try to imitate every sound that a deer makes because that's foolhardy. Basically, if you can simply do a, a social grunt and to be able to make a bleat of a doe, not an estrus and a bleed of a doe in estrus, you can call deer in any time. Now, uh, give us some examples. Talk about <coughs> well, some deer. I'm going to wet my whistle. Okay, we can do that. One of the things that you want to do is not call deer two by two. Most people call deer two by two, too damn loud and too damn often. <laughs> The problem is that most of the time deer don't vocalize, they don't make a lot of sound because they don't necessarily want to give their position away because of predators. But when you see more than one deer, they will socialize, they will make grunting sounds. So a, a basic grunt might simply be very low key, but not really deep. Bucks will tend to be a little deeper. The more aroused the buck gets, the deeper and longer the vocalization becomes. Now, if you have a doe, when the doe is not in estrus, it's a simple meh, meh. I mean, it sounds just like sheep. Meh. When a doe goes into estrus, everything changes because now she's in her cycle depending on what phase of the hunt you're in. I hunt religiously by the moon and I know that does go into a false estrus. The key is the first full moon following the autumnal equinox. After the first full moon following the autumnal equinox, about four days later, does will go into a period of estrus that lasts about 29 hours. Then it's gone. If that coincides with the beginning of the bow season, I'll use the estrus call, which I'll demonstrate in a second. After the second full moon following the autumnal equinox, the rut usually begins four to seven days after that second full moon. In theory, the rut should be on now. Now, as you know, I go out scouting every day. The does, there's estrus odor in the woods. The bucks are not chasing over here in this area right now. Maybe it's the weather, maybe it's the fact that we had warm, now cold, and it's going to get warm again. I don't know. But once I see them start chasing, then I'll start using the doe and heat urine if I'm putting out my arrows with the little pieces of uh, marabou. But basically, the, the does will now go, instead of this, meh. The estrus sound will be meh, meh, 
and that's the key. So if I start hearing that, I know they're in estrus, the bucks will start chasing, and usually what I'll do is I'll wait a day or two before I'll actively hunt a buck, if I were hunting another buck, uh, during that period because I want to make sure that they're actually more than just chasing. The fact that they're chasing does does not mean that the doe will necessarily be receptive. Once that buck hooks up with a receptive doe, he will stay with her day and night, follow her wherever she goes for three, four, five days and breed her repeatedly until she won't accept him anymore. Then he'll look for other does. Interestingly enough, for every full moon cycle, from there on, for about three months, even as late as January, those will go into a brief estrus cycle because nature will have a staggered breeding in order to ensure that the species carries on. So you'll get the first breeding a month after the first full moon in the autumnal equinox, and then every month for four to five months, those will go into heat. But the main one will be after the second one. Do they ever ask for you? Yes. <laughs> Very often. In fact, you know I, I, I had one interesting situation when I was bow hunting in the Catskills in a pine forest one day. I actually called a, a, a doe in and I shot the doe at, I think it was 11 yards, and a buck charged me from behind and gored me. Really? I, I, was, I was actually out of work for about 10 days. Wow. Most My dangerous. assistant principal at school did not like that Most story. Most dangerous animal in the woods, of course, is a, uh, is a, do is a buck. Uh, yeah. You know? I'm sure he wasn't really targeting me, but it was probably just yeah. running by, yeah. but I, I took the brunt of it. All right. Don't forget, if you want to get in touch with Will Daskal, you can go to his website, and uh, you want interested in art, or you want to just talk about hunting, you probably want to do that, too. Anyway, hey, Will, thank you very, very much. We really appreciate you always coming a pleasure. on and sharing your experiences always uh, a pleasure. hunting. Uh, and hope you enjoy the book. I, I'm, I am going to. Uh, the complete turkey hunt that Will did at one time. Uh, I'm interested in that, and that'll be great. And you've done a couple other books and some other things. Yep. Always got things going, huh? Hey, I've got a cup here for you. Our official Dunkelbergers well. Sports Outfitter coffee mug with the out in the open logo on there. So, Thank you. I'm, um, I'm a big investor in Dunkelburgers. <laughs> hey folks, after these brief messages, we'll be right back. When someone... Hey, folks, well, welcome back to uh, Out in the Open. Uh, very interesting with Will. A lot of fun, very interesting, yes. We could do a whole series with him. I know we could. You know, because he had so much more information that he would like to, uh, mm -hmm. to share. You know. I know, that's great. That's but, what uh, we're going to have him on regularly. we got 16 pages here of Dunkelberger's 40th anniversary. Uh, looks like a catalog, but it's actually a flyer. you got it in the paper. We have tons of them here. Come on down, pick yep. up your own. And, boy, if you're interested in anything, this is a special sale. And, if it, you're goes, interested and it goes in to November 18th. Yep, if you're interested in anything at all, hunting, fishing, boating, clothing. camping, mostly hunting, yeah. clothing, that kind yeah. of thing. But got a lot of good stuff, so mm -hmm. you'll want to come down and do that. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot going on, and we're getting ready for our, our hunting season, heading Absolutely out to hunting camp, are. getting things ready, starting mm -hmm. to get our clothes ready. I have to practice those sounds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was one of them. But was it was one of them. <laughs> no, <I don't> <laughs> Not even close, no. huh? I think Remember I'll like still use machine. my little grunt too. <laughs> you know. I think you should. That's the easiest thing. <laughs> hey, you know, we're going to be here. We're going to be someplace. But you know, it's so nice outside after Sandy has passed that we like to get outside as much as we can. So we're going to be here. We're going to be outdoors. But you can bet we are going to be. We are going to be out in the open. Absolutely. <laughs>